All right, that is 7.01, in fact, so time to get going. Welcome, everyone. Nice to see so many of you here tonight. Uh, being proactive, taking steps to improve your own health. We are going to be uh, talking about a subject that always, a topic that always seems hot. It certainly is one that is fascinating, uh, and that is collagen. And anytime a topic is really hot, there's bound to see, be some myths and misinformation about it. So my goal is to clear all that up, tell you what you need to know about this important topic, uh, as well as to um, give you sort of practical news you can use type information something just light on my nose so let's get started uh, just a few housekeeping tips before we get started if you have any questions please uh, type them into the Q&A section as we go along I see somebody using the raise hand function I'm sorry I don't know how to respond to that um, I don't know what that function is about because I'm not uh, especially familiar with the Zoom platform. But if you do have a question, please feel free to type it into the Q&A area as we go along. And I will do my best to answer as many or all of your questions if possible at the end of the presentation. I am looking, I'm trying to aim for about 45 minutes worth of information. And that gives us you know, 10 to 15 minutes for questions afterwards. So let's get started. Let's see if I can. No, that's not going to work either. Okay. So I am naturopathic Dr. Kate Rayom. I'm a graduate and former faculty member of the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine. I am the author of this book, Vitamin K2 and the Calcium Paradox, How Little Known Vitamin Could Save Your Life. And I am, among many other things, a, a busy working mom. I'm also an educator with Factors Group, which is what brings me here tonight. So what we are going to cover, it is a little bit of a roadmap for the next hour or so, is the significance of collagen in the, in the body, where you find it, what it's doing there, uh, and where it goes, because collagen does go away, uh, as well as how to get it back, as well as some collagen supplement myths and facts. We will be talking about collagen supplements tonight and different uh, supplements you can use to boost your own collagen, uh, as well as sort of the truth and untruth about those. If anybody right now doesn't, isn't muted, can you please mute yourself? Because I do hear some background noise, shuffling of papers or something like that. And I thought everybody was automatically muted, but I guess somebody isn't. So thank you. So first of all, what is collagen? Collagen is a main structural protein in the body. It makes up 25 to 35% of all of the protein in the body. So there's quite a lot of it. And you find it everywhere throughout the body. I'll show you where in a moment. And it can take many different forms and shapes if it's mineralized. So there's minerals like um, uh, calcium in it. It can form bones, tendons, and even you know cartilage, depending on how much mineralization is happening in there. And a collagen is produced by cells called fibroblasts. These are, these are what makes collagen. Uh, but the fibroblasts can decrease their activity with age, which can become problematic. So that, um, you know, it gives you a hint about where we're going and what we're doing. I don't know why I'm having so, many, so much trouble advancing my slides today. So collagen, as I said, is everywhere throughout the body. You will find it in different amounts in different tissues. Uh, one of the main areas we've heard the biggest organ in the body is your skin and your skin is about 75 percent collagen by weight uh, after that we also have collagen in ligaments those are the connective tissues that connect our bones a bone to a bone tendons connect our bones to our muscles so ligaments are 70 to 90 percent collagen tendons are also 80 to 90 percent collagen cartilage uh, that buffers the joints is about 70% collagen. Our bones are about 30% collagen by dry weight. And in fact, there's more collagen throughout the body in bones than anywhere else. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and even our blood vessels are 40% collagen by weight. So if you think about the importance and the amount of those tissues that are made up of collagen, you can begin to understand and appreciate how if collagen levels are declining, then that can mean problems. It can potentially mean, well, we know it, uh, 
leads to obvious changes in the skin that are visible, but in areas where it's not visible, it can lead to problems with our joint structure and function, uh, thin or brittle bones or changes in uh, bone health, and even changes in blood vessel health uh, as the blood vessels maybe become uh, thinner or weakened, uh, and that can contribute to even cardiovascular disease. So there's a, you know, big implications for collagen loss because it makes up so much of our tissues when we're healthy. There's, there are about a dozen different types of collagen in the body, but most of it, 80 to even 90% of collagen is two types, type one and type three. You, this is the you know, most that you find in things like skin and ligaments, tendons and bones. Then you have type two collagen. There's about 9% of type two and that's found in the cartilage and about 1% is, is everything else. So collagen, the reason why it's found throughout the body is because it's extremely strong. Uh, you know, per the size of the fibril, it's as strong as steel, if you can imagine. It's also very flexible, so it can assume all kinds of different shapes, and it's fibrous, so it's fairly tough. Uh, now that said, collagen doesn't have any stretch to it. It bends, but it doesn't stretch. And so there are other tissues called elastin tissues that are also made by the same cells that produce collagen, the fibroblasts, uh, that give stretch to tissues that require stretch. Some tissues don't need stretch. Like think about your ear. Uh, you, you know, your ear just more or less stays there. It doesn't need to stretch and come back the way your skin does, for example, or the way your blood vessels do. Since blood is always pumping through them, they need to be expanding and contracting, or your lungs, for example. So collagen um, needs to be produced on a constant basis. These tissues, no tissues in our body are static. Our tissues are always turning over and that's a normal process. And the body needs to make at least one pound of collagen every five days just to maintain our tissue health and properly constantly remodel our tissues. That's a lot if you think about it. Um, most of this is happening in the skeleton. I mentioned even though the skeleton is only 30% collagen by weight, most of the collagen, because there's, there's so much bone tissue, uh, about 1.6 kilograms of collagen is found in the skeleton. And that turns over about 43 grams per day we need to make of new collagen to maintain our bone health. Next comes skin at 1.39 kilograms of, of collagen in the average person uh, of skin. And that's turning over as well. And we need to make about 28 grams of collagen per day to maintain the amount of collagen we have in the skin. And this goes on down. Uh, overall, we're looking at almost 100 grams of collagen per day. So that's about five a pound every five days, uh, just to maintain our health. So when you see that, and when you realize that, you realize, first of all, what a challenge it is for the body to keep up with that kind of production. And if we can't keep up with that kind of production, the type of impact that it can have, it can affect our bone health, it can affect our skin. Again, that's the place where it's most apparent, uh, but it can affect any other aspect of our health, the heart, the ligaments, cartilage, muscles, all of these can be affected if we can't keep up with the amount of collagen turnover that's happening. So why does this happen? Well, our bodies do continually make collagen throughout our lives. That process is always ongoing. But collagen synthesis does begin to slow and unfortunately, breakdown does get faster. Um, even starting as early as our 20s, uh, most people don't notice that uh, until they hit maybe mid 30s is when most people start noticing, you know, the first fine lines. And that is the obvious or visible uh, result of a net loss of collagen that you can see from the outside. But the extent to which you're losing it on the outside, uh, you are losing it as well on the inside. So it's affecting other tissues that you can't see. We lose collagen fast. We lose it um, about 1% per year. And that will excel 1% per year starting in our 20s. And that will accelerate for women at menopause because um, estrogen has a protective effect on collagen. So there can be a, a period just after menopause in which there's a more rapid decline in collagen, then it settles down. 
Um, and as well, for men, if their testosterone level is declining, it has a similar effect. <coughs> Excuse me, I tried to mute myself for that and it didn't work. So this is what happens. Um, so we, we do tend to lose collagen over time. And like I said, I said, you can see it from the outside, but you can't see what's going on necessarily on the inside. So here is a schematic of on the left side would be younger or I think more aptly collagen replete skin. And the collagen provides a structural layer just underneath the very uh, outermost fatty layer of the epidermis. Then you have the, um, uh, or, or skin cell layer, excuse me, of the epidermis. Uh, and then you have uh, elastin and collagen providing structure and, and function and stretch to the skin. Uh, but when that starts to break down, then the underlying layer that sort of the substructure or foundation um, is diminishing. And so you then will see lines on the outside, just looking at what's happening uh, in the skin. So here is a very famous example of a fellow who was a truck driver for 40 years. One side of his face was exposed to the sun, uh, you know, on most days. And you can see the difference from one side to the other. And you can see, obviously, there are signs and symptoms of collagen uh, degradation that is normal for age, but there's an accelerated area here based on the sun exposure because sun exposure will um, and UV will damage, localize, provide localized damage to uh, collagen in, in the skin. And so this is a very obvious example of a factor that accelerates collagen damage is UV exposure. Now, fortunately with UV exposure, that's only localized. There are other factors that will accelerate collagen breakdown that are more systemic, stress and high cortisol levels will accelerate collagen breakdown and will slow the rate at which your body produces new collagen. So there's a double whammy there. Stress is really problematic. People, you can tell somebody who's been through a stressful period, they can end up having dark circles under their eyes or look aged even, um, even in a short period of time. Now you can get some of that back when the stress stops and your body is able to start remaking collagen uh, again. Uh, but even you know, in a short period of time, you can see these effects. Inadequate nutrition, there are certain nutrients that I'll talk about that the body needs to make collagen. And if those are lacking, uh, you simply won't be able to make it uh, well enough. Smoking is something, the free radicals and the toxins that you find in uh, cigarette smoke or vapes will uh, accelerate collagen breakdown. Lack of exercise is associated with poor density, um, quality, and amount of collagen in the body. Exercise helps to stimulate collagen production. Like anything else, um, too much is not necessarily a good thing either because the body is putting too much energy then into trying to repair your muscles from exercise and doesn't necessarily um, can't channel everything into collagen production. But definitely getting some exercise is important for collagen production. And any kind of inflammation that's happening in the body has a potential to accelerate collagen breakdown. So let's talk about collagen and bones. Collagen and skin is pretty obvious because uh, you can see it when it's there or what, what it's doing there and, and what happens when it starts to go away. But collagen and bones is not so obvious. And the role, the, one of the big roles that collagen plays in bone, first of all, is to provide strength but also to provide flexibility. So we have to talk about bone mineral density as if the most important thing with our bones is that they be strong and hard. We don't want our bones just to be hard. We want them to flex a little and bend a little because when you fall, you want to be able to bounce a bit. And this is called bone toughness or the ability to bend without breaking. And collagen does give this to bones. And so uh, by having more collagen in your bones, it helps them to be more flexible. But collagen also provides binding sites for uh, minerals like calcium. And so there's more places for the minerals to go. And so actually having more collagen in your bones helps the bones be stronger and more flexible. And so the decline in collagen in bones is a really overlooked aspect of bone health that I think is underappreciated or not discussed enough because you can throw all kinds of minerals at your bones, but if the matrix 
where those minerals are supposed to go and be held into the collagen that matrix, if that's shrinking, then there's nowhere for them to bind to. So this is really important aspect of bone health. And as you saw from that graph earlier, bones are arguably the number one uh, demand for collagen because they're constantly turning over. Okay, so we talked about what collagen is, where we find it, and why it goes away, why it starts to decline. What can we do to get our collagen back? Because the good news is that at any age or stage of life, you can help support your body and your fibroblasts to do their job in making collagen uh, as well as they can for wherever you are uh, at your state in life. So first of all, we can support the fibroblasts. We can help them do their job better, talk about how to do that. We can focus on activating the biological pathways that generate new collagen. We can provide the raw materials to build the collagen and we can protect the collagen that's there once it's formed. So part of protecting the collagen, step number four, I already sort of talked about because uh, it's a matter of avoiding the things that cause collagen to break down. So not smoking, trying to keep stress under control, uh, exercising, uh, but not excessively. And when I say excessively, I mean, you're not trying to train for you know, a marathon triathlon that is very demanding on the body. So those kinds of things help to protect the collagen once it's formed. And even if you're very concerned, uh, you know, you can protect at least your face. Sun exposure is good and, and healthy for, for you. You don't need to avoid it completely. Uh, but certainly if you want to save face, as we say, then that's something you can do to protect collagen, at least locally. So let's talk about the other things we can do. Here's a fibroblast here, this funny looking cell. And uh, there are certain nutrients that the body needs to make collagen. First of all, we want adequate antioxidant intake. So a wide variety of colorful fruits and vegetables, herbs and spices, any kind of antioxidant will protect against free radicals and free radicals are damaging to collagen. So that's sort of a general uh, good thing for collagen to have a diet that's rich in antioxidants. Next in particular is adequate vitamin or optimal, excuse me, vitamin C intake. So in addition to just uh, to being an antioxidant, vitamin C is required for the production of collagen. It's a specific nutrient that in fact is a rate limiting factor in your collagen production. So in other words, if you are uh, low in vitamin C, then your body can't make collagen. Uh, you've probably heard of scurvy. Scurvy is, of course, severe vitamin C deficiency. Uh, that used to happen to sailors, you know, out at sea before they started carrying uh, citrus fruits with them on their long voyages. And what happens in scurvy is people's teeth fall out. Why? Because when you have scurvy, your body can't make collagen. The connective tissue throughout the body dissolves, essentially, because you don't have enough collagen, including your gums, and so the teeth fall out. Uh, that's what causes that. And actually collagen and vitamin C are really important for dental and oral health um, because that's your gums are all connective tissue made of collagen. You also need adequate protein intake because of course being a protein, you need amino acids to build collagen. But that doesn't mean that just because you have plenty of vitamin C or even a high protein diet that you will uh, um, op optimally or automatically make collagen. And so we'll talk shortly about that. So, but these are just basic, in terms of basic nutrition, making sure you're getting a lot of, lots of antioxidants, uh, lots of vitamin C and uh, optimal protein or adequate amounts of protein. So then we'll, we'll start to talk a little bit about collagen supplements because these are uh, extremely popular and there's some things to know about what they can and can't do and what to look for when you're choosing them. Uh, and you know, specifically, as I said, just because you're getting a high protein diet doesn't mean that protein will be turned into collagen. Uh, but when it comes to collagen supplements, um, that encourages that process. And I'll show you um, some studies that um, look at that. So collagen supplements can do things like support joint health, help to reduce joint pain associated with osteoarthritis, help to nourish skin, hair, nails, bone, teeth, and gums, uh, support lean muscle growth and recovery after a workout, and support arterial health. These are all from different studies about um, collagen supplements. And now you know, uh, you should understand why they can do this. I won't get bogged down into the details of every single study, 
Uh, but there is research to support the effects or benefits of collagen supplements on skin, hair, and nails, things like improved skin hydration, uh, collagen helping to reduce the depth of wrinkles, collagen, um, hydrolyzed collagen helping to facilitate the synthesis of collagen elastin, and that will help with increased skin elasticity. Uh, hydrolyzed collagen helping to reduce the appearance of cellulite. I don't think a lot of people have heard about that, but basically cellulite can become more apparent when the structural matrix that holds uh, the fat tissue in, which by the way is different for women than it is for men, which is why women tend to get cellulite and men not as much. Um, when that structural matrix starts to thin due to lo loss of collagen, uh, then cellulite becomes more apparent. And hydrolyzed collagen helps to strengthen nails, decrease incidence of breaking, and increase nail growth. Nails themselves are not made of collagen, they're made of something called keratin, but the nail bed from which the nail grows is rich in collagen, and especially the little micro um, blood vessels that you find in there, uh, they are rich in collagen. And then looking at bones and joints, uh, studies that have shown that boosting collagen helps to strengthen bone density, uh, helps to support healthy joints by maintaining healthy cartilage, as well as reducing joint pain associated with osteoarthritis. And this isn't just age-associated joint pain or collagen loss. Uh, this has also been shown to improve joint pain in college athletes. So if you know people who are uh, very active or younger athletes, then they need help for their joints. Their, you know, their bodies are taking a pounding uh, and this helps, to, um, helps them recover and go through that rebuilding and remodeling process more efficiently. Okay, so let us look at some of the sort of myths and facts around collagen absorption. And then I'm gonna talk about two different ways you can help to uh, boost, I guess you could say, or replenish your body's collagen. So one of the main myths that we hear about collagen is uh, that it's just digested like any other protein into individual amino acids. And it, there's really no difference in taking collagen or having a high protein diet. Uh, but in fact, collagen, um, what are called uh, hydrolyzed collagen peptides. So they take the collagen and once they um, condense it down. It's in these little two and three amino acid long chains. Those are in fact absorbed whole. And so these would be absorbed and remain intact. And this ultimately, these little uh, protein chains is what signals to the body to start making more collagen. So what happens is the little peptides are absorbed, they go into circulation, the fibroblasts sense them and say, oh, look, these are, little, these are little collagen fragments. Collagen must be breaking down, let's start making more. And then they use the amino acids in that collagen as the building blocks to make more. So that's um, more or less how that works. Another one of the most common myths is that because there are different types of collagen in the body, you need to take different types of collagen supplements uh, for different types of benefits. And that would stand to reason, it seems intuitive, and yet somehow in the research, that doesn't bear uh, any weight or doesn't seem to bear out. Um, and so that's just something to keep in mind. So what's interesting is we know that uh, in regardless of how, like I said, there's two different ways that you can replenish your co collagen, um, that collagen uh, supplements and collagen boosting supplements will increase not only collagen, the amount of collagen in the body, but the quality. So not just the quantity, but the quality, an increase in fibroblast density. So helping to make more collagen producing cells, as well as the density and diameter of the collagen fibril. In other words, we're helping to produce better quality collagen. Because of course, when our collagen declines with age, it's not just decreasing in quantity, but it's often decreasing in quality. So you can help to restore that. All right, so where are we going here? And I can't get it back. There we go. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, there are two ways, two clinically proven ways to restore or replenish your collagen. You can use one or the other, 
you can use both if you want. You don't need to use both. They, they work well, each one individually, but they can also be used together. So the one would be hydrolyzed collagen supplements. So actually taking, as I mentioned, collagen peptide, um, uh, hydrolyzed collagen peptides and consuming those and having them get your fibroblasts working harder and more efficiently. The other one is with something called choline stabilized orthosilicic acid. One of the most common questions I get asked is, what about vegans? Or is there, is there a vegan source of collagen? Collagen always comes from, or collagen supplements, from animal uh, products. Uh, so there is not a vegan collagen per se. However, choline stabilized orthosilicic acid, also known as biocell, is ref often referred to as the vegan collagen generator because it contains no animal products, but it will also get your fibroblasts to make new collagen. So these are the two ways that have been shown in clinical trials to uh, help you replenish your collagen. So let's look at each one individually. Like I said, you can take one or the other. Some people do take both, but you can um, do one or the other. All right, so first let's look at collagen peptides. And this is a look at the total body collagen line of collagen supplements. There are uh, powders and there are tablets. Most people tend to take a powder, but some individuals don't want to bother with a the powder. They just prefer tablets. That's fine. It's not like it's a lot of powder, but, but still. Um, and then there's also within these collagen supplements, there's bovine or marine. So a beef source uh, or a fish source. So let's look at the, the different options here. By the way, how are collagen peptides made, regardless of whether it's coming from a bovine source or marine source or, or any, um, any uh, sources, animal source, collagen exists in nature in this long, triple-stranded, quite complex protein uh, structure, these three strands. And this actually you can do in your kitchen. You can take animal bones, uh, beef or chicken bones, for example, put them in a pot and by cooking them, it breaks down and, and separates the individual collagen chains. Uh, and then uh, by consuming it, enzymes will break those into smaller fragments. Now you don't get a lot of collagen, you will get a little bit if making your own homemade bone broth. Um, so that's one way to get collagen into your diet is to make your own homemade bone broth. By the way, how do you know you've made a good broth? When you put it in the fridge after you cook it, it will thicken into a gel and you know you've, you've done a good job and you probably had good quality bones to begin with. Uh, but it's not as concentrated as taking a hydrolyzed collagen peptide supplement, but same practice, but, uh, you know, in the factory, um, bovine sources, often it's, it's skin that's used or a uh, fish, uh, bones or skin typically um, are essentially cooked. This separates the collagen chains. Enzymes are used to cleave them into the specific little peptides that you want. And this provides a very concentrated source of those collagen peptides by using uh, very specific enzymes to cleave them into those little peptides. So the total body collagen powder, the reason why I mentioned this specific uh, combination is because it has some uh, added ingredients that are very important to know about when you're shopping for a collagen supplement. So the total body collagen powders, there's an unflavored uh, orange or pomegranate flavor. You can just mix this in a little water. Warm water works better. It mixes better into a little uh, warm water. Some people put it in their coffee. Uh, you can put it in a shake if you want. Um, people often take this at the beginning of the day. I will sometimes, I will usually take it at, at the end of the workout or for whatever reason my practice is to take it later in the day. It's just my routine. Each scoop provides 10 grams of hydrolyzed bovine collagen, uh, as well as some added ingredients that um, work synergistically with the collagen peptides and have other effects on skin and bones and joints. So the idea here, it, typically one serving daily, it's, it's a fairly small serving, uh, mixing with uh, some kind of liquid and then consuming immediately. And guaranteed results for skins so for people who are looking for reductions in fine lines and wrinkle, wrinkles within 28 days. The 
uh, standard uh, label uh, guideline is for joint health for osteoarthritis used for a minimum of five months to see beneficial effects. But to be honest, most people notice a, a difference far sooner than that. Uh, but certainly for skin, it's um, guaranteed results within 28 days. And the added ingredients, which you don't find in all collagen supplements, include hyaluronic acid, L-tryptophan, L-glutamine, vitamin C, and biotin. And I'll talk about what those are doing in there and why those are important. So hyaluronic acid, this is a, a, a complex, a compound that does a number of things, but specifically it helps to maintain hydration in skin and joints. So it helps to pull water. You may have heard that hyaluronic acid can absorb 1000 times its own weight in water. It's very hydrophilic, so it, it draws and attracts water to it. So just the hyaluronic acid will provide a nice um, smoothing, hydrating effect to skin. It also will draw moisture into joints to provide a nice um, cushioning. Uh, you want uh, moisture and uh, what's called synovial fluid inside joints to cushion them. So that's quite nice. Then there's glutamine, which is an amino acid that is present in small amounts naturally in collagen, uh, but additional glutamine helps to support pro uh, muscle protein synthesis. It also very soothing for the intestines. Um, it is a, a key fuel. It's very healing and nourishing to the cells that line the gastrointestinal tract. There's also biotin, which is a vitamin B family that promotes healthy hair, skin, and nails. A vitamin C, as I mentioned, is a key cofactor in the reactions that produce collagen. So so if you are not taking a collagen supplement with vitamin C in it, make sure you're taking extra vitamin C or else your body is going to have a real hard time making adequate amounts of collagen, especially if you're under stress, we need more vitamin C then. And finally, last but definitely not least, arguably the most important is collagen supplements should contain tryptophan. So tryptophan is an amino acid that is naturally uh, missing from collagen. So collagen is not a complete protein, even though it's an animal source protein, it's not a complete protein, which means it doesn't have all of the essential amino acids required to make a full protein. The amino acid that's missing from collagen is tryptophan. And it's naturally absent from collagen or present in extremely low amounts. And studies are very clear that because it's low, that taking collagen supplements without added tryptophan can deplete your body's tryptophan levels. And so what? Well, that can affect your mood, your cognitive function, and your sleep. And that is a very well-documented effect. In fact, when they're trying to study tryptophan depletion, why would they do that? Well, it's a, it's a, uh, a model for depression. They will give study participants collagen supplements and that will drop their tryptophan levels and then they can study what happens to them after that after when people are depleted in tryptophan so absolutely um i think it's important that tryptophan be added to a collagen supplement if you are taking a collagen supplement that does not contain tryptophan then you should be taking uh added tryptophan you know you can pick up a 5-htp supplement and be taking that once a day for example otherwise you can get problems Okay, so as I mentioned, the powder, very easy, convenient to take. I think that's the most popular. However, um, for people who don't want to take powder, uh, then uh, tablets are an option. You have to take six tablets a day because, you know, it's a lot of collagen to try to fit into tablets. They're not huge tablets, but it's still six a day. But, you know, some people do prefer that. It says three tablets twice a day. Frankly, you could take them all at once because you're doing that with powder um, or you could split it up but ultimately it provides the uh, collagen and all of the other ingredients. And it works just as well. And then as an option, so not everybody wants a bovine source. Some people don't uh, consume um, beef or beef products or for whatever reason, uh, prefer a marine collagen. So a fish source of, um, of collagen. And so there's the total body marine collagen. It comes in two formulas. One has all the added ingredients, hyaluronic acid, glutamine, biotin, tryptophan, all of those things. And of course, that's the form that I prefer and recommend. There is a source that doesn't have any of those in it because pe some people just for whatever reason want that. Um, but of course, I do suggest to those individuals, they take extra vitamin C, extra tryptophan. So at that point, it's like, why not just get it all together? But 
The marine source um, contains a form of collagen that has also been shown clinically to reduce the number of wrinkles within 28 days. They typically look at um, lines around the eyes, crow's feet. Will also enhance skin elasticity and moisture to uh, promote the appearance of smooth skin, support joint health, nourish skin, hair, nails, bone, teeth, and gums, help reduce the joint pain associated with arthritis, uh, support lean muscle growth and recovery after workup. So all of the things that I mentioned for the total body, uh, the marine version will do that as well. Okay, so that is a look at collagen, hydrolyzed collagen peptide supplements. Now, as I mentioned, the single most common question I get asked is, what about vegans? What about people following a plant-based diet? Uh, well, for those individuals, fortunately, there is biocell because there is no vegan collagen per se, but you can get your body and your fibroblasts to make more collagen with choline stabilized orthosilicic acid, which goes by the shorter and easier name Biosil. And this is a vegan collagen generator. So there's no animal products involved. This is in fact made from a mineral. Uh, the mineral is silica, which you can see in, in some forms uh, or some other supplements. However, things like horsetail extract, um, you know, it's called horsetail extract because it would help you know, horses would eat this and apparently get, you know, healthier manes, for example. Uh, but for, for uh, humans, our absorption of silica from those sources is quite low. And when you can take silica and, and combine it with choline, this is a, uh, a nutrient that will help to carry the silica into the cells. And this then will stimulate the fibroblast to start producing collagen. So this is an option and a wonderful option, a lot of research uh, that is, goes into this to show absolute benefits for uh, skin, hair, nails, bones, um, joints, and uh, you get the benefits that you want from uh, the bio cell for this vegan collagen. So this is clinically proven. There has been a lot of research invested in um, this choline stabilized orthosilicic acid. And this is independent research done by independent research facilities. <clears throat> and here, so here's just sort of an overview of the kinds of studies that have been done. Looking at skin, a reduction fine lines and wrinkles by 30%. Increase in skin elasticity, so uh, not just um, reduction of fine lines and wrinkles, but helping with skin elasticity and the, the bounce back by almost 90%. Increase in hair strength and thickness of around 13%. Uh, fortifies nails significantly. There's uh, numbers all over the board in terms of the improvement uh, in nail quality, although that's one of the first areas that people will notice. Um, you know, with age and with a decline in collagen, nails will become rough and ridged and uh, cuticles will become uh, jagged and ragged. And this is one of the areas where people will notice, and there are lots, lots, lots of influencers online saying, you know, here are my nails before, you know, I've been taking Biosil for three months, look at my nails now, they're nice and smooth and shiny. It's, it's cool if you see that online. Uh, and bones increases bone collagen production by 15% and increases bone mineral density at the hip by 2%, which doesn't sound like much, Unless you have low bone density, then you know that that's quite good. Uh, and reduction in physical pain and stiffness, uh, inhibiting cartilage fragmentation, improving physical function of joints. So BioCell comes in a couple of forms. In its natural state, it is a liquid. And so in its original state, it comes in this liquid and you would take it in drops. Uh, typically five drops twice a day, and uh, it works very well in that way. However, choline and anything that has choline in it has a very strong, distinct fishy taste. Uh, and so just be aware of that. It's, it's very distinct. And so for that reason, um, BioCell was made into capsules, basically taking the liquid and, and uh, dropping it onto um, a little carrier, microcrystalline cellulose. And, uh, and, and put into capsules for people who uh, don't want to take the liquid. And that dose, there's two capsules per day or as recommended by a healthcare practitioner.
There is a new form because lots of people seem to want the liquid, but they didn't want to taste the liquid. And so now very new to the market are the Biosil vegan liquid capsule. So this is the liquid inside a soft gel capsule, but it's a vegetarian soft gel capsule. So again, the dosage here would be one capsule two times daily. So who should use Biosil? Well, anybody who's considering or concerned about uh, collagen supplements, people even as early as their 30s who are beginning to see the signs of reduced collagen on skin, hair, and nails, uh, people of any age dealing with the effects of collagen loss, uh, postmenopausal women maybe who are starting or in that period of rapid collagen loss, uh, men and women who want to improve their skinny elasticity and reduce fine lines and wrinkles, anybody with weak, brittle, or thinning hair, <clears throat> or adults who want to uh, strengthen weak splitting and breaking nails. Oops, back here. Oh, trying to get back. No, it's not working. Um, oh, that's it. Okay, so I want to mention two more things in terms of supplements that don't directly help collagen, but uh, are nice for skin, hair, nails, as well as overall health. And omega-3 essential fatty acid is not directly related to collagen production. However, it's really nice for smoothing skin, hair, and nails. Uh, also important for cardiovascular health. It's anti-inflammatory, so that helps with joint health. Um, so the point is it really provides a nice complement to the goals that you might be trying to achieve if you're concerned about collagen. Really, I recommend a, a good quality omega-3 essential fatty acid. For example, this is the one I happen to take, the Sea Rich, um, because it's tasty <clears throat> and it's high potency. And um, that is something that people will, will notice the difference for skin, hair, and nails. And because I always get asked about this, I thought I would mention it. Uh, very new, very, very new, actually, as of yet unpublished research suggests that vitamin K2 plays a complementary role in collagen production. Uh, and certainly we know that vitamin K2 will help prevent the calcification of elastic tissues that tends to um, deteriorate um, collagen structure and function with age and inappropriate uh, collagen calcification. So vitamin K2 is found in certain cheeses and some types of fermented foods. Uh, it's important for bone and heart health as well as maintaining healthy collagen. Okay, one of the important things I wanted to mention that, you know, I, I showed a number of different brands here um, that is, <clears throat> One of the things that these all have in common is tested for purity and potency by Ashura. This is a uh, independent third-party testing facility based at the British Columbia that will go above and beyond even the strict Canadian guidelines to check for the that every supplement contains what it says it contains and no surprises, no unpleasant surprises. Uh, this is very important when it comes to ingredients with animal sources, things made from skin and bones, even fish skin, for example, can have environmental contaminants in them that you do not want to end up in your product and you wouldn't know they were there unless you were testing for them. So this is one of the roles of Ashura, making sure that products are clean and don't have environmental or other contaminants that may enter a product during manufacturing. So Ashura is your um, assurance that you are getting exactly what it says on the label and nothing that you wouldn't want in there. So this uh, tests for, uh, to make sure products are free of GMOs. The mass spec testing side of things uh, refers to a testing for over 700 different contaminants. Again, it's not a requirement of Health Canada to, to test at this level, but it is possible and it's being done um, on all the products that I mentioned. So you can look for this label on products sold in health food stores. Okay, and that brings us up to the end. I see there are a few questions in the Q&A and there are some comments in the chat. So I will go to the Q&A first. Here we go. Uh, first question, does a collagen powder have a good amount of protein in it to be used as a protein powder supplement for exercise to build muscles? Oh, this is, this is a great question. So, um, as I mentioned, collagen on its own is not a complete protein, but once you add the tryptophan to it, then it does become a complete protein. But you don't eat a lot of collagen. And so, for example, the total bovine collagen I showed you, it's 
all together, uh, once you add the tryptophan, it is a complete protein, but it's only 10 grams of protein. So you can use this, and I do use it after workouts. Uh, in fact, the glutamine that's in there has been shown to help build muscles in particular. Um, so yes, it does count as protein, but there's not a ton of protein in it. So it on its own exclusively, um, what you could use it as protein supplement gets quite expensive uh, if you're going to have you know more than one scoop per day. Um, but it does count as a complete protein. Next is, does omega-3 have any collagen content? No, omega-3 doesn't have any collagen in it, but it complements, like I said, it provides um, healthy fat, which is important for skin, hair, nails. Uh, and so it sort of complements the effects of the collagen um, that you're taking it. Uh, question, comment on bamboo silica. So this is an example, um, a silica from bamboo or horsetail, or there are other, a couple of other different sources is not, it's, it's sort of widely advertised, but it's not very well absorbed. Silica has a, a particularly low bioavailability on its own. This is where the biocell came from, is when you take silica and combine it with choline and you get this choline stabilized orthosilicic acid, this particular complex, the silica then uh, is highly bioavailable and makes a big, big difference. Um, you, you don't see the difference with other types of silica supplements, unfortunately. Okay, there do seem to be some comments in the chat area. So let me see if I can go, well, there's lots of them. Go back to the top. Uh, people from all over. Okay, collagen. Uh, does collagen make a male senior's face look younger on a limited budget? Well, it's, it's cheaper than a facelift. Um, I can't say we can compare uh, collagen supplements to a facelift, but I can't think of a less expensive way to make your face look younger. Well, I guess just smiling would be the next uh, most affordable way to improve our, uh, and, and youthify our appearance. Um, I heard that marine collagen is better than bovine collagen. That's that true. I'm glad you asked about that. You know what? There, there is a, seems to be a, um, I would say a, a myth or a misconception or a popular notion that coll or marine collagen somehow is better. I know my own mom has been asking me for marine collagen. I don't want the bovine one. Can you get me some marine collagen? I'm not sure where that came from. Based on the research, there's definitely more research around the bovine because it's just been around longer. The marine is newer to the market. Uh, so there's, a, there's just more research around the bovine. They look to be quite similar. I know they will both deliver results in 28 days. Um, so I would say that the, that the marine collagen is better is a myth. They're both uh, good. Um, let me just keep going here. Any long-term effects in taking collagen supplements? That is always a wise question. So uh, the, there have been quite, there's been quite a bit of research uh, to date, uh, no adverse effects. I mean, essentially it's a type of food to the body. Um, and so no, I can say that there haven't been any long-term adver adverse effects, certainly long-term benefits, yes. Uh... Have you ever heard that taking collagen supplements impacts your kidneys over time? Uh, I can't say I have heard that, but I think I could probably guess, you know, for people who have kidney disease, like severe kidney disease, um, they need to follow a very low protein diet because their kidneys can't handle protein. So, I mean, this would, the 10 grams of protein, for example, in the total body collagen would count towards their total protein intake, uh, but absolutely, Collagen supplements uh, are not hard on the kidneys, and I would definitely say that that's a myth. What is the optimal intake of vitamin C? That is a question, you know, there's some debate over that. Certainly we know we need more vitamin C when we're under stress. Most animals can make vitamin C, but not human beings. And that puts us at a real disadvantage because all other animals, when they're under stress, will make vitamin C and humans can't do that. And so we need a certain like bare minimum, like the recommended daily intake, which is now something like 90 milligrams, is just enough vitamin C to prevent scurvy. We can do better than that. 
Um, but how much is the optimal amount probably varies per individual, uh, probably varies depending on whether or not you're under stress. Uh, and as well, if you're trying to make more collagen, uh, personally, I take usually take 500 milligrams twice a day. Um, and that's to try to meet me needs for you know, stress and collagen production and, and everything else all over. Does chicken bone broth by itself help my collagen? So as I mentioned, you know, bone broth, whether it's chicken or beef bones, is a source of collagen. It's not as concentrated as a collagen supplement, but if you, you know, it, something, it will provide some uh, collagen, some of those uh, collagen fragments. Uh, bovine collagen equally as effective as marine collagen for skin. So both uh, studies have shown both bovine and marine will show results within 28 days. I haven't seen any studies with a side-by-side -side comparison to measure them that way. So in that sense, I can't say um, if they're exactly equally effective, but based on the research, we see similar results in a similar time frame with bovine and marine. Is total body collagen or biocell better for skin and nails? That is a great question. I have not heard that before. So I, I, I again, so we haven't, you know, this hasn't been studied. I, I have people say, like they comment, they have the feedback about biocell for the nails. Everybody who takes biocell seems to say, oh, like my, you know, and I can see myself, I've had this same experience. My cuticles used to be like, like rough and ragged. And I really noticed the difference with that, with the biocell. I feel like I notice a difference quicker with skin for the total body collagen, but that also has hyaluronic acid in it, which has a plumping effect. So um, it's hard to say which is better. We, we get excellent feedback um, from people on both. I feel like Biosil, you'll notice nails probably maybe quicker and faster and maybe skin faster for collagen. But like I said, they both do both. Uh, here is a question about natural forms of K2. So grass-fed animal foods, uh, things like butter and egg yolks from animals that have been out on the pasture eating green grass, not easy to come by. Uh, other things are fermented foods like brie cheese, gouda cheese, Jarlsberg. Uh, there are certain cheeses that are high in vitamin K2. Those are some of the top ones, brie, gouda, and Jarlsberg. Uh, natto, which is a fermented Japanese uh, soy food, is also very high in vitamin K2. Excuse me one second. Okay, terribly sorry about that. Somebody opened my office door and the dog just busted in and she was rolling around on the carpet. <laughs> um, so uh, that's other, and so natural forms of K2, natto is the fermented Japanese soybean food is also the highest in food in vitamin K2. Can collagen supplements help and improve the gray hair? No, so the hair thickness, strength, diameter, yes but not graying of hair. Um, copper supplements in very small amounts may help somewhat with graying hair. Graying hair is also often uh, genetic. Long-term side effects to taking collagen, no long-term negative side effects that we know. Uh, natural forms of K2, we answered. Thank you for the kind... Um, feedback. Oh, how much tryptophan? As long as you have some, you'd wanna be having at least 50 milligrams of tryptophan. Uh, the total body collagen has 100, that's fine. You're taking that once a day. You just need some, and I would say a minimum of 50 milligrams of tryptophan. So if you are taking existing product that has no tryptophan in it, then 5-HTP uh, as a source of tryptophan will help to balance that out. Uh, can I share the slide with the amount of, oh yes, hyaluronic acid? Okay, let's see, in addition to the collagen. Uh, let me go back to that slide. There we go. Mm. 
Okay, so there's the slide. Now this is the amount of the ingredients in the total body collagen formula. Will you share this whole presentation with us or a link to the recording? I uh, think that, um, I don't think we have anybody from Healthy Planet on the line, but if I'm not mistaken, Healthy Planet will post the presentation tomorrow. I don't know if they send a link to everybody who's registered, possibly. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't think, uh, Saif, if you're still there, then please uh, weigh in or make a comment. What if you have a liver condition? Does it affect the liver? Uh, no, there is no uh, concerns with that. Um, for muscle growth and recovery after workout, which collagen supplement is best to use? So uh, you just, you wanna make sure that the collagen supplement has added glutamine and tryptophan. So the total body collagen works well for this one. Um, that would be the best one I would say for a post-workout supplement would be the total body collagen. Um, Oh, what are these ingredients I see on the side of the container, alanine, lysine? So that's a breakdown of the amino acids that are found, that are naturally occurring in collagen, includes alanine, lysine, probably valine, isoleucine. All, that's just a list of all of the amino acids that, that occur in the protein. That's the collagen. Okay. So looks like I think I may have... Uh, oh no, How, what collagen would you recommend for people with osteoarthritis? Um, both of the, both the marine collagen and the total body collagen has been shown to be helpful for osteoarthritis. I like the combination of the collagen and hyaluronic acid, which again, you can get in the, either the marine or the um, bovine forms uh, because that additional um, hyaluronic acid will, will draw moisture into the joints, which is quite nice for osteoarthritis. Uh, but either of them are a good choice for osteoarthritis. I see the total body collagen contains 100 milligrams of vitamin C. So would you recommend further daily addition of vitamin C? So I don't recommend further daily addition of vitamin C with the total body collagen, the 100 milligrams that it has in there. Now, unless you're under stress, if you're under a lot of stress, yes, then take extra vitamin C. But for the purposes of collagen production, uh, assuming that you've got at least a little bit, you're, you know, you're meeting your basic needs for vitamin C with your diet, the 100 uh, milligrams that you have in this product of 60 milligrams in this particular one uh, is fine. With the BioSil, because you're making more collagen, I do recommend people take a vitamin C uh, when they're taking BioSil. Okay, and I think that you need to take the tryptophan at the same time as collagen. Well, uh, you don't necessarily need to take them at the very same moment. Uh, but it's not a bad idea if you're sensitive to, to um, uh, tryptophan depletion. Uh, it's probably a good idea to take them at the same time. Oops, I'm changing slides here. Um, can you bounce back from one and the other and achieve the same results? Oh, uh, yeah, you could. So if you wanted to do say, uh, you know, a dose or a bottle's worth of total body collagen, then a bottle's worth of uh, biosil. Biosil will also help to protect and maintain the collagen that you have existing. You could go back and forth, yeah. Just gonna hedge your bets. Can you take more than 10 grams of collagen per day? You could, but I don't think that more than 10 grams of collagen will give you more benefits. Uh, your body can only make a certain amount of collagen per day uh, and taking more uh, likely won't uh, make you produce more, if that makes sense. Um, can you take collagen in an empty stomach or, or take collagen on an empty stomach or with other food? They haven't studied that specifically. I tend to take it on an empty stomach um, or away from other foods just to make sure you're getting optimal absorption of it. But they haven't looked at that specifically. Uh, how collagen changes the diameter of hair strands. Oh, sure. So, so hair is also not made of collagen. It's made of keratin, like the nails. But again, like the nails, the, um, the matrix or the, the, the bed, the follicle from which the hair grows has uh, collagen in and all around that. 
And by having adequate amounts of collagen, it improves the blood flow to the hair follicles. And so that's how hair will grow. Like, you know, in the biocell studies, it said roughly 13% in, in thickness and diameter um, because of the, in fact, it's because of the improved blood flow to the hair follicle. And will it do this for hair all over the body? I imagine that it, it might. I, we certainly have hadn't had any reports of anybody becoming, becoming hairier uh, all over their body. If you drink vitamin C, do you still need to take supplements? Um, no, if you're getting a lot of vitamin C. Uh, I had glomerulonephritis, can I take collagen? My kidney function is good. As long as kidney function is good and there is no protein restriction in the diet, then collagen supplements are not contraindicated. Um, is the total body collagen from a grass-fed organic source? Yes. Uh, it's grass-fed, absolutely. I don't know if it is certified organic. I'm going to need to double check that for you. Thank you very much. Thoughtful information. Oh, and it's already eight o'clock. I see by the questions. Okay. Well, that seems like we've got to all the questions, which is great. Thank you so much for your attention and all of your um, wonderful questions and engagement. I hope this has been uh, news you can use and practical information and, and busting some myths about collagen. And if you have further information, you know, or need further information, feel free to reach out to Healthy Planet. And thanks, everyone. Take care. Have a good night. All right.